Hi everybody, welcome back to the Jansen Art Studio. I'm David Jansen. Welcome to a fun little painting. I love it when I get to paint some birds and some flowers and stuff together. Today what we're going to do is I have an 11 by 14. Uh, this is a super MDF panel. It's a real lightweight, non-toxic uh, MDF panel, wood panel, and it's really stable and flat and I love to use those. And what I did was I took a little bit of light gray and medium white from the Heritage line and just base coated it. You can have sealer in it, but I didn't put any sealer in it. The paint has enough sealer or into it that you don't need really need to do that besides sometimes when I paint on these I like a really matte surface and um, it doesn't need to be as hard as as having sealer so it's you, it's your choice whether or not to add sealer but it's not necessary always to add sealer especially if you're using heritage paint okay so uh, what I have here is then I just sketched this little guy out here they're a tiny little guy as a matter of fact he is just a little bit bigger than uh, what he is in real life uh, but I wanted to put him on 11 by 14 panels. I, had, I wanted him to be, you know, a little bit larger um, size on uh, on this particular panel. We're going to put him with some wild grasses and some uh, little tiny blossoms, little tiny uh, daisy type flowers, wild flowers. And uh, he's just a fun little uh, light gray, black and white paint uh, flower to go, I mean, uh, bird to paint. And so let's have some fun with him. So I have this panel. I paste it with a little medium white, a little gray. Then I just sketched on my on my pattern. If you're going to uh, put on a pattern or something with that, then transfer it uh, or sketch it. Sketch it really dark so you'll be able to see it through some of the manipulation we're going to do here through the background. For my colors, these are the, the um, Heritage uh, Multimedia Acrylics. I have a cool uh, red violet, a warm naphthol red light, a Hansi yellow, a phthalo blue, black and white, and then um, I have some pine green. And I put out a little bit uh, here of some burnt sienna in case I use it. These are the colors we use in the Painted Simply, and uh, I've been adding lately, I've been adding the pine green and some uh, burnt sienna and stuff like that to uh, the, some of the beginning uh, Painted Simply palette. And I've really enjoyed those. Some of our, some of our uh, customers and teachers have asked for a medium green so I started to use that uh, pine green in there all right so what I have here is a three-quarter inch brush these are old brushes I don't like to use new brushes when I go about painting something like this a little cap of extender out like this okay we'll put some extender out here I'm going to manipulate the background here first by taking some white now look how thick I like my colors these are very, very, very thick paints. These are the acrylic, but they're very, very, very thick. I like to use thick colors. It's much easier to use the colors thick than it is to use it thin. If you're putting out Heritage for the first time, I'm using the global colors. And uh, the global colors, what I do is I just mix up a little bit of extender. I put them out into these little tiny uh, souffle cups and let them thicken up for a couple of days, mixing some extender along the way. They're called global colors. We have that on our... our um, on the uh, Global Art Supply website, how to make those particular colors. But uh, I like to use them really thick because I can thin them if I want to, but we need that thick color for later on in painting this little bird when we go to feather him. That thick color is really important. We'll get into that, okay? So I'm gonna take some of the white down here, then I'm gonna add a little bit of thalo blue. Thalo blue is a blue-green, and uh, you know it, it makes beautiful skies. If you wanted to get more towards, say, the, uh, the violet or something like that, you can reach up and grab a little bit of your red violet, get towards a blue violet, towards uh, a color like an ultramarine blue and white. And that may, that's a beautiful color as well, right there like that. So and we'll just vary that a little bit. Let's put some of this in. And let's go, and you gotta be careful when you have, this is why I say make it really dark. When you're using a color, that has a lot of white in it, especially the heritage white, because it's so opaque. So it'll take it out really, really easy. Now I'm going to use, I'm always going to use a paper towel in my hand. I like to have that. And I'm going to vary this blue just a little bit. This paper towel you can use to wipe back just a little bit so you don't lose too much of your, of your uh, original concept drawing or your pattern if you've put on a pattern. Okay. These are the techniques that I use in, in uh, the art of painting. Um, the bird, uh, the birds, and a garden of birds, and uh, I just thought this would be fun to kind of show some of you this. 
some more different ways of doing this. So I'm going to put on the idea of a sky. Let some of this go gray. I like to do this. I like to, to take the colors out like this, and I like to use a paper towel and pull back like this. And I like this to, uh, you know, go back to some of the original colors. I like to add movement in like this. I like my backgrounds to have movement in them. And uh, that becomes very important, you know, in the paintings. And for many years, as a decorative painter, I would paint backgrounds and stuff that were so... Uh, perfect you know and now I like to have backgrounds that have movement it seems that's where most of the uh, the buying public is is like that as well they like to have movement and interest I'm gonna put a little more blue in here because I'm a professional artist I'm a selling artist and I track what my customers like and my customers now they like to have a little bit of interest and a little bit of movement like this back into the painting just adds so much life let's take some uh, green some pine green right down here Let's lighten that up just a bit. Um, you can gray that up because it's kind of a bright green. You could take it over here a little bit yellow if you want. Uh, we can add just a bit of extender to that to move that. And let's just grab some green movement down through here like this. Okay, and some light. Let's get some lights and some green just to put some green movements down through here. This is just to break up some of the uh, the grayness of the background here. Now I'm going to gray this green down with a tiny bit. You could either cool it down with a little bit of your red violet or gray it down a little bit more with some naphtha red light and that will gray the color down. See how it takes the intensity right down more towards a gray because the green and reds are complements. Okay so it takes it right down here and we can add a little more interest here. You could also do it with the blacks. You can do it with black and white and gray it that way. There's a lot of different ways. And we show you that in all the different videos we do. We show you, I show you all different kinds of ways to do that. Now let's just pull through that a little. Let's just use that to break up the gray and add some areas of green, okay? Now let's come in and uh, we'll, we'll add some other contrast areas here before we go into actually painting the bird and one of the things that you have to think about as an artist is you got to think okay how am I going to lift this bird off of the background now he's going to have he's a little gnat catcher so he's going to have a real dark uh, head and some white coming in through here but right into this area here where his body is and these flowers are these are great areas to lift help lift the bird out so let's take uh, some of our green and let's just take a little bit of black in that, maybe a little bit of our uh, Hansa yellow, and we'll make a different kind of darker green air color right here like this. Don't mix it up too much. This is what we call modeling. Just tap it together on the palette here so it's just, it's just lightly mixed into your brush so you get some variation to the color coming off here. And what we'll do is we'll just add a little bit of this right into here. We'll maybe make it a little more green, come right out over here like this. Just move the brush out and move it out of this area here like that. Now, we'll just take our finger here and move this through. This is the nice thing about global colors. The global colors that I paint with, the heritage like this that I have them mixed up, they, have, they won't dry for several hours like this and they'll paint just like an oil, but it's a non-toxic acrylic, which is great. So. Now I can add this movement. Now a lot of that movement will disappear, but what is most important is that I get some of this green and this uh, nice color right in here and right into this area here. And that's what's going to really lift the bird, push the bird forward here into the painting. We'll push some of this uh, green right up in towards that blue sky, right in there like that. Okay, that'll be good. And uh, now I'm going to, uh, you could, sometimes I continue to do the painting with this uh, larger brush. Sometimes I go to a smaller flat right away. But if you're going to do the larger, I like to add some movement here like this. Just some suggestions of some, you know, stem movements and stuff like that through here. Because we're going to have stems and stuff coming down. So you want to give some movement ideas here. You don't have to do anything perfect. We paint very casual. The most important thing is the bird. So we just want to, you know, give the viewer some movement here. Just use the chisel, a little bit of paint, just lightly skip over the edge like this. And just push it around. Use the corner, push that around. Give some little, little things, little movement here like this. This is what, I just light, light, light on the brush like this. 
that's where I like to get that light little movement like that through there. And it just breaks it all up and adds a lot of interest to the painting. Okay, so that has that all pretty much set there. I'm going to take that big brush. I'll just poke it in some extender here and we'll set it down the side. That'll stay nice there for hours so you don't have to worry about anything. And uh, we're going to go over to a smaller brush here. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to start working on the main coloring areas uh, of my bird here. So one of the things I'm going to do, I'm going to come in just a little closer here. So you can see that just a bit more. Let's push this right underneath my palette here so we can come a little closer. Okay, now I'm going to come in and start setting the colors. This is an older, <laughs> again, I like to use older brushes on these because sometimes a newer brush, these are the fusion brushes and they're fantastic, soft, they're synthetic squirrel brushes. Um, and, uh, but, you know, they last, but they'll, you know, after a long, you know, after painting, you know, several paintings, they'll start to fray out a little bit because of the way in which I use them. And that's when I really like them when they get that way just a bit. I, I can push them back together and hold it with a little extender like that. And they hold an, a, a nice, uh, you know, chisel on them. But, um, I like that, that when they start to fray out a little bit, they paint birds really, really well. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to start assigning the major colors of the bird. Now he's a little gray bird um, and he is, uh, so we'll start out with some gray. So there's a lot of different ways to make gray. Of course, we have our black and our white. That's a classic way to make gray, but it's not a real painter's way to make gray because it's too cold, it's too dead, it's too neutral. So we have um, green out onto our palette. So we'll take some red over here. And we'll take that green right with this naphtha red light right over here. And then let's add a little white. And look at the beautiful grays that we make right in here, this kind of gray color. So if it's a little red looking like that, then you can add a little bit of green to it and take that back the other way more towards a more neutral gray this way. So that makes a real pretty gray. You can add a tiny bit of yellow into that to warm that, to change that gray. So if I take all of this together, here's this gray, right into some of that green, right into here, like this. We can even make a cooler one down here with some red uh, violet and a little bit of black. So red violet's cool. And so a little bit of black makes really, really cool colors here. We can uh, warm all of this up here. Let's come right up here to the top up here like this. And we can make real warm kind of grays. You know, green grays here, this beautiful uh, colors here. These will be the colors of him. Now, if I wanted to kill that gray, uh, that, that green just a little bit, I add just a tiny bit of the red, and you can see it kills that greenish color to it too. So you have lots of ways. These are all beautiful grays here, and that'll make a beautiful uh, little uh, gnat catcher here. So what I'm gonna do is find kind of a medium toned gray. I'll just use a little extender here. We'll just come right into here to a medium toned gray. Greens and reds, a little black and white and yellow right down here. Nice medium toned gray. And we'll come in now. His, his uh, body is going to be right into here. And we'll set in the base of his body. Now I'm going to use some what we call, I'm going to use some short choppy strokes like this as I base him in. And um, they're kind of mediums, medium length here and longer as they come down the body here. And we're going to shape follow. We're going to just fill in like this, just kind of following his shape. Okay, as I come up into his neck area here, we might lighten this up a little bit. Let's even go right up here. Let's just create a little lighter area right here, just a little bit lighter here. And these are the techniques that I outline a lot in my uh, the book, The uh, Garden of Birds. And it's... Uh, you know, kind of following along the same thing. Now, see where I got this here? This is why we use the thick paint, is I'll be able to just pull down like this and just create this movement down through the paint here like that. We don't want to blend at all. We don't want any kind of blending going on. But we're going to base this in. We'll, we'll use just a slightly different gray over here, maybe slide to this little black air color here. And we'll, we'll put on his back mantle of his wing which is the top covering of the wing on a bird. It's called a mantle here, okay. And uh, then we'll slide some of this down, right down here like this, right down in here. 
and if you've gotten rid of some of your pattern you can't see it uh, you know you can always wipe it with uh, with your paper towel to take it back and then we're going to add a little more of our cooler shadowy color a little bit of the red and you know since we have such a black a blue back up here in the sky we could actually add a little blue to this too right down here real dark 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 color here this will be the underside of his wing that's turned back like this he'll have a um, kind of a turn back right here which you're seeing underneath the wing here and that'll fly that'll go like that most fly catchers have the end of the wings that round like that so the little gnat catcher also has that We'll have that little part right there. And I'm just going to blur it just a bit for right now. And we use the blur. I just take my finger and I, I run it right into the background there. And I we blur it like that so that um, you have edges. And when we're painting, we like to control our edges. Now, I'm going to want the interest to come right up around his face and his eye and his beak and so that'll have a lot of detail and the blossoms that are associated with that area that I'm going to paint are going to have a lot of detail in that area so those we're going to make those edges really pronounced back edges like here like the edge of the wing or the tail and the bottom side of the design will blur with our finger just a little bit and that will make them recede back okay so we'll uh, we'll put these on so we'll put on his little tail here just the idea suggestion of his tail and there's a little black uh, tailed gnat catcher too, which he, this guy looks just like him as well. So, but we'll blur that back just a bit. Let that just kind of fade in there. Okay. He has a little black uh, bit here of his uh, secondary uh, feathers here, his secondary. And, uh, you know, most of his coverts, which are the, the covering of the secondary flight feathers and stuff that you have, you have the primary large ones out here and the secondaries and, and, and tertial ones. But um, most of the coverts, the coverings of those here, he looks very heavy. He doesn't have pronounced feather coverts like a lot of birds do. He, they look more very hairy because they're so small. Now we'll take a little bit of that black, that dark color. And we'll come up right up here to the top part of his head. And he has a, a little bit more pointed head that comes down like this. And then we're going to pull that right down in here. And just pull that down. Now, around his eye, I'm going to leave a little white ring, which you know, the birds have. We call it the eye ring. So I'm going to leave that for right now, right around his eye. And... This will we'll go in and paint specifically, but we just want to tap this to corner of the brush in here. I don't want to do anything perfect right now. I just want to tap that in there. And sometimes I set the, the uh, beak, I'll use the dark here for the beak. Now, sometimes I set the beak in with a uh, round brush. Sometimes I just use the chisel of the brush here and I'll just put that in too. It's slightly curved on the top there and then straight on the bottom and that's the kind of the beak that a lot of fly catchers have it's slightly curved on the on the uh, top here and I'm just going to push that back just one second reset that one again slightly curved on the top just slightly round it just a little bit and then pretty flat just pretty much pull straight in on the bottom there that's got that and we'll tap some of that in we'll use my favorite bird painting brush here too because he's a small little guy okay so that sets that uh, in there now we'll take some uh, other grays let's just make this a little bit more gray with some white change the gray up here let's just add a little bit of this into the as a tonal change so we're we'll add some other gray in here just in a few areas to break through and change the grays one of the things that you're going to paint a pretty bird is you want to, you have an undertone color, which we just applied. Now we'll come through and change the colors a bit. Here, let's change here so that uh, he gets some different tones. And look how that changes him. Now we can go back and revisit some of these lighter tones through here. Some of these other tones, we can revisit those again. But now look, as you build these tones, look at the modeling that he starts to get. And uh, that becomes very, very important to the bird. Now we can push right like this 
to not blend, but to, to blur the edges of those colors, which we want to do at this particular time. We'll pull down here, pull down like this. These are like his coverts of the covering those little fly feathers. And the back side of his wing here, we really want to blur just a bit into that sky area, um, just because that will also uh, help him come forward. But one of the things that I do like to do uh, before I sit there is, you know, and I start and I did it a lot in the bird book, and I really like doing that. Is I'm going to specifically come in and paint around the front part of his face and the back of his wing with some of my sky color. So I'm going to take a brush here. Just any kind of a flat brush that's right here. I'm going to get a little more blue into that here. And I will specifically, and I started to do this. Those of you that have the bird book, you'll recognize this. And, and I really like this. And I, I, it really kind of crisps up the line right here, which becomes very important. And we want to we want to back paint down here to give a little angle to his head right there like that. And then we will just take this in. So down like this will blur it against his back there but i want to make a clear color of uh, a line of color right here boom like that and really clean and nice before we go well, i got a little green in that so you can just lift some of that off but uh we want to get really clean and nice right up here along the top this is going to be the important part of him right here right there like that and that will really push him forward and so sometimes I like to put a, a a little different blue or a bright little blue if he's up by the sky I like to just go ahead and suggest that right in that one area there and that just is going to help him see we'll just model that out like that but that will help him uh, lift off now we do it now you can do it later and, and I show that in other videos and stuff doing it you know several times but uh, doing it now will we allow us to to paint out back against that so now we've got a nice clean little area a more of a fuzzy area back over here which will that you know your eye will be drawn right up to here to this contrast and the edges that we're going to create right there so we'll set that uh, down over to the side I'm going to grab my number four round my number four round is my favorite bird painting brush here Okay, we'll come in here and we'll pick up a little black. Now that black is nice and thick, so I'm going to thin it with just a little bit of extender here. And I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to tap in the round part of his eye. I don't want to make a round dot. I want to tap in the roundness of his eye. Now the size is very important, so make sure that you're watching the size of that. Okay, the size of the eye is very, very important. Now I don't like to make a round dot because that doesn't have a character to it. And you want the face to have a lot of character. So we want to put that eye on. We're going to put a white eye ring on. We're going to tap back and forth several times with the color get to, get, to get the type of interest that we're going to want to have into the painting here. Okay, as a matter of fact, let's come in and let's work on that area just a little bit more here. Okay, so let's come in real close here. So you can see that, we'll come in just a bit closer here, okay? And what I'm gonna do is pick up some white, I'll just drop it in right over here, and I'm gonna use just a little point of this brush. This little number four has such a nice point to it, and I wanna tap, I wanna use small tapping strokes like this, and we'll go ahead and paint around and add to his the little eye ring some of the lightness there of the eye ring. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take some of the dark color that I have, and I'm going to paint up next to that, and take some of that out. Just tap into it like this and take some of that out here like that. Okay, and so it doesn't make a perfect ring. You get this movement in and out here of the eye ring like that so it doesn't make a perfect uh, ring there I like to uh, take a tiny tiny bit of the the white there and add a little shine to the top of the eye now you don't want that to be a perfect round dot and usually it's hard because you know it's it's hard to get a small dot like that so I put it on the white and then I tap through it with some black here to uh, to make sure that I get the uh, the uh, the eye small enough there so I, I put on the 
the light and then I tap through with the dark and then we'll just come through and tap through some of this eye ring a little bit more but I'll put this on several times and I like this I like the brush to be a little bit fuzzy so that I get this this movement going around there like that let's just move some of that around here like that that looks good and a couple times sometimes I put a we'll pick one side here and make it a little bit uh, a little bit more defined right there like that so then you get an eye like that that has a lot of nice movement to it so let's take some of that black okay let's come in with the black here and let's just come in and push through small little touches like this into the, the face okay we'll we'll imagine right here onto his beak at the top part of his beak we'll tap some of that right into his beak there and then right down like this okay we'll use small we we'll use small feathers uh, strokes like this see how I'm pulling in reverse these are the feathering strokes and we can lift out beyond the head there just a little bit into that blue and it just ruffles his the edge of his head there just a touch which makes him more realistic and uh, we'll just feather down like this pull down okay and we go back you know depending on the bird I will go back and forth like this several times now I'm gonna pick up a little lighter gray right over here I'll make a little lighter gray right in here like this and I'm gonna come in and just tap some of this through work some of this through this area on him as this was where the light would be and in and around his face up here will be small little tiny feathers and I usually uh, indicate those with just little taps of the brush here and how you use your brush becomes so important so I'll use little taps there and I usually put on too many and then I paint them out with a little bit of dark into the positions that I want them to have and uh, so we'll just grab some more of this dark right up here maybe even a touch of that bluish color into that works really nice nice deep 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 dark and a little bit of a lighter blue gray sometimes your black areas in the light look almost bluish so that's having a little lighter blue gray is kind of a nice color combination in there as well with those so you can just give a little touch into that and this is what sets the bird painter apart from a lot of others was we'll take our time to put some of these tones in here like this and it just takes a little bit of time but it adds so much to paint back and forth like that okay so we'll just pull it in reverse we'll tap some smaller color in there and back and forth and each one of those gives a little different movement there we go like that now I'll take some of this this color this gray right here this medium gray and we'll come down right into this area and I'm just going to pull down and start setting some grays some grays down in here to his neck okay we can put a real light indication of it right in here just a little bit to say there's his uh, beak area there there like that we'll clean some of that up with some dark okay and uh, let's just gray this down just short little so you got to think of if you're doing feathering strokes they've got to follow the contour shorter ones up through here a little bit longer coming down through here okay down through here and pick up more change the tone a bit and then as you come down his body they'll get a little longer and a little longer and you can see this different tone and it starts to feather in him starts to feather him up here let's get some of this out here like this some of that tone in there let's darken just a bit of that tone back there in the back darken some of that and I like to constantly uh, 
brush mix on my palette. I don't work too long with one color. I go back to my palette, refer, and change it. I had a student one time and they asked me, she said, I'm so afraid of using the paint, I'm so afraid I can't make the same color. And I wrote back to her and I said, I never make the same color. That's why I brush mix a lot, is so that I'm making the same general tone in an area, but I don't want to make the same color and use it that same color too many times. That's just like paint by number and making it flat. You want to constantly change your tone. Constantly. Like I'll come right over here and say, okay, I'm going to start applying some light. Some of this bluish tone, some of this grayish tone. I'll make some beautiful light colors right in here like this. Put those right onto my brush like this. And let's come in and start applying some of the light feathering that he will have right in here. Okay. And... We'll start to pull this down. Doesn't he start to, boy, when you start to get the lights, that's when they really start to, to come out. They start to, start to sing here. So we'll pull some of this out like this. Here's this beautiful tone here. There we go, and this will drop down here. We'll slowly lighten that up. Let's get a little more light white right over here. Let's just pull some of those right down like that. Okay. Follow the contours. We want some of this to kind of like contour up over his wing and then down into his breast area there. Let's use the point of the brush here, real small, up and around the beak here. Let's add some of these real light little touches right up here like this right up around that beak right up in this area just real small light little detail feathers right up there like that let's put a little shine more shine of a blue feather in right up here so once you get that light see sometimes you have to come back and revisit some of the other lights because this white will make that seem so low so dark so you may want to come back and add some more Let's take some of this light right up around like this and, and push the side of his face right here, right up next to that eye ring. Leave a little bit of there as a shadow. But see the angle that I'm pulling here. And their, their feathers look almost like hair. They're so whisper fine. And so we'll just whisper some of this with the, just the light tip of the uh, brush. See that little whispering you get out here like this? Just a light tip. This is why I like the brush to fan out just a bit because it just does this so well. This little number four, just light, little light areas. It's like using a, uh, you know, a, a, a very fine liner brush to get some of this line movement here like that. That's very pretty on him. And, uh, then we'll let's darken it down just a bit and continue going down his body this way and this way. Pull some of that out that way. You can see then as I get down here, I'm just going to let this become very soft. And a lot of times, you'll see me in the bird book, a lot of times I just use my finger like that and, and uh, just let it go soft here. So. If anything starts to tack up or anything, just mix in a little extender. But you don't want this, you want to keep your colors as thick as possible. Uh, you don't want to use, you know, these types of techniques don't work with these flow acrylics that they say, you know, the ones that are really loose and watery. They don't because you want this color to stick and stay. So your colors have to be thick and they have to be sticky. So they have to, it's like the acrylics are almost to the point of where they're drying. But these are global, so you don't have to worry about them drying. But they get a little bit sticky and that's what you want. That's why this lays off like this and looks like a little bit of a hair. If that was really loose and wet, it would run together, blend together. So you don't want that. So I'm just going to come down now, pick up a little more. See, this is what you want, this, this draggy like this. And so you got to, and if you get too much, just go like that. Just take it off. But this is what makes the feathers. And so you want your paint thick. You want it a little bit sticky. You don't want thin you know, acrylics, bottled acrylics, that kind of stuff won't work with these types of feathering techniques. Let's uh, grab some more white. Let's come right down here. Let's whiten this up just a bit more, a little more thicker white. Okay, let's come back and restate a little lighter this time. Right down, right down the shape of his, and we'll drag some of this out, the shapes of feathers here. 
right down where his head would come into his breast area. Yeah, build that up a bit. Right like that. This is where I want most of my interest and my edging and stuff, so I'm taking lots of time to build into this area. The rest of him will paint very quickly. We'll do that, like that, build it. Now, if you get it a little bit too light, I want to have a little more gray over there for roundness. I'll just put a little gray back in my brush and just paint it back out. So if you wanted to come back and reset something in here, you can come back and you'll see me in, you know, in other videos and stuff, come back in and, and restroke some gray to reset something and then come back and restroke some white back up on top sometimes. I will work sometimes, especially in the center of interest up around the face, several times like this until I get this nice layering of color and the detail that I want to have around his little face. Okay, So I, I like to work that several times. There, like that. There we go. And I'm going to put just a little bit more power. See how thick that white is. This nice thick white that just sticks. See it sticks right where I put it. Now I've got layers of feathers here. And I can direct that. If I wanted this soft some, on some birds, you'll see me. I don't want it on this one soft because I want them kind of hairy. But uh, this, I'll push my finger back and forth and around through there like that. And I do that a lot in the bird book. I'll push my finger out like that. And I'm just going to push a little bit out like this and increase this feather in here. Now I'll just let these just soft come out like that. And just... Maybe a little bit more of that light right down through the center here. Just whisper, whisper, whisper. Let it fade like this. Down like that. That's that's kind of pretty. Now we'll put a, a just a light little feathering here. Let's go back up towards these other grays. That's just a little sticky right there. So I'll add just a tiny bit of extender. But not so much to make it too thin. Just a tiny bit. Because you want this to stay. I want this to stay where I put it. And if it's too thin, it'll bleed out. You don't want thin. So I'll put that a little bit of that dark. Let's put, I mean on that light, let's come back in and let's just move a little dark. Let's go back and work a little bit of light, a little different tone here. So I work back and forth in these kind of reversing strokes. And that's what gives the, the movement of the feathering in there. Maybe a little bit of that blue-gray touch. It gets that beautiful tones in there. Let's grab some black here. I'll thin that just a touch. Okay. A little black. Let's give a nice dark contrasting stroke for his secondary flight feathers here. Coming right up here as an interest of his edge of his wing there. Okay. Some of this nice contrasting dark where it's turning down right by his body. Down there like that. Okay. And uh, maybe just just a touch of this. We'll cover it up with some feathers. But we don't wanna we don't wanna say too much about his tail, because we want that to to disappear. Neither do we want to say too much about his uh, his feet here. So we'll just make suggestions of these and some suggestions of their... I, mean, I, love, I love painting birds, but to me their feet are so huge. <laughs> you know, they, their feet are so huge and they they uh, look almost like a, something out of a dinosaur out of Jurassic Park, you know, because they can grip anything. But it, it to me, they tend to take away from... If you render them too precisely, they tend to take away from the beauty of the face and the cuteness of a bird. So I tend to just understate them a lot. I don't paint them very much. And a lot of times, I, I mean, I just kind of just say that they're there because I don't like the way that their feet look. Now, the, the, uh, the wing here will have a, a few little strokes right in here like this that will suggest the uh, secondary flight feathers here. We'll have some lighter little strokes that are going to come down here and just kind of wrap around this just a bit. That kind of suggests the uh, primary flight feathers, and it actually should be dark right here by the tip, right like that. There we go, like that. Maybe a little bit longer right there. Those are the flight, the, uh, flight feathers. So 
you can have uh, a little bit of dark you know like a little dark line showing like right there that would show the uh, so, uh, just a little indication of the of the primary flight feathers there and if you don't know some of the bird structure it really does help I put that into the book and it really does help to know just a little bit you don't have to be perfect with it but know a little bit of it so if you you know it's kind of like when you paint roses if you understand the the uh, the rose the the parts of the rose then you can paint the rose a little better so his his uh, coverts here are really kind of hairy kind of he's very feathery uh, and I oh I just like that see when I just take that and I just touch that sometimes I like that and I'll just put a little bit more in there like that it makes a nice feathery uh, look to that now we'll just we'll do get a little whispery feathers here and I like I like the bodies of the birds that have these whispery little feathers and and uh, we'll just drop a little bit of that right there like that just using a little point just kind of just lightly touch uh, we'll whisper a little bit of this right in overneath uh, overneath over the uh, the uh, leg there overneath the leg that the leg that's a new word and uh, we'll drop some of this down here like this go through follow the contours follow the contours down through here and what you want to do is make sure that this is not as light as what it is right up through here now in these little guys you know you get some of this done here like this and you say okay I like that here let's step back just a bit I like that okay and I like that but this area is taken away from his face just a little bit and that's where I say that's where I start to use my finger like this to push it around and blur it together just a bit. Now this is why you use the thicker paint because you get the nice areas of it still blurred. You can still have some of that individual movement and, and that is so very important like this. And you can just watch watch this working there on your, uh, on your bird to see if that's going to, you know, see how now it's soft and doesn't take away. I still got this lovely movement here and the reason why that works so well is because I have I've laid in very very thick paint so my finger comes through there and it moves those colors together without blending those colors together you don't want to blend them you want to keep that color individuality and, and just let it move together okay so that sets that guy up here like this let's step back just a little bit more that's kind of nice let's come in and uh, we'll go back to our small little number four uh, kind of flat here. I think I will put out a little bit of burnt sienna just because it's going to be a little different. And I'm not going to use a global because we're going to finish this painting up pretty quickly here. So I think I have a little bit left up in here under this one. So let's put out, pull this down and let's put out a little bit of burnt sienna here. I'll just use that out into the into the colors. And if I just use a little extender into that, I can use that. That makes this lovely kind of brown, warmer browns and stuff colors. You can add a little black to that. It'll just help warm some of these up a bit. And we're just going to uh, grab some of this and work this through some of these other angles and stuff here like this. And uh, we'll touch that in just a few areas. Just move that color through just like this. I want to loosen this up, but I want most of the the painting and everything to come in here. So I want to get real loose with my colors. I call this kind of fracturing. Fracturing up all the colors, putting it together. This is going to be my center of interest. I want to make sure that I stay that real dark green black co contrasting color right down in the, to here. So I'll add just a bit more of that contrasting color. That's where I really want it. Maybe a bit of that fractured out this way here. Okay. So that'll stay right over there okay and it makes a good contrasting difference right there for the for him okay and um, then we'll come in we're gonna put in little little white flowers little and we'll just take some of our gray some of the gray colors that are gonna be from him here and uh, we're gonna make little white blossoms they're gonna appear at different angles now we'll be a little bit more specific right around right around him what these guys are going to look like and then out here we'll let them get just just touches of color 
and just disappear it to the shape here like this. So we don't want uh, we don't want to do anything specific. We want the viewer's eye to come right around in through here. So we want to uh, keep this very uh, clear up in here and then just real flat fractured with the colors as they come down and they go out through here, we'll fracture down. See, so we'll touch some right in here. Right now it's just like create some, some flowery type movement. Just let this go down like this. And go down, we'll create a little bit of movement here. We'll make more of our petals in just a moment. This will, that's just a little too, too close there, like that, okay. That's kind of nice. So that just gives the idea of those. And uh, we'll use a little bit of uh, Hansa and some burnt sienna here. We'll give like little ideas of, of little centers here. Tap some of these around, some of these colors around. Just put in little suggestions. We'll add more leaves and we can add more flowers. And that's the beautiful thing. See, you just start building it. And that's what you do when you're building it. Not, don't go through and set it all in. Add to, add to, add to. So slowly build it here. I will probably add more flowers and stuff going in here. But I'm getting a good feel for, the, for it right now. I don't know where everyone is going to be at this time. So we'll take some of this and just kind of just whisper and whisper. Whisper some of this out through here and let it fade away, okay? And I want some of these to be kind of kind of thistly almost. That's what he likes to hang around, all these little ones that have little, like little thistly type movements too. So we're going to want to have some, just some real quick little light just pull out almost with the chisel of the brush. Some little quick movements like this. Just a little fluffy, thistly type movement. There's very small, so he hangs around small little plants and stuff. So there, like that. Just little movements. And we're going to dab in some, we'll take some pine green here, some Hansa yellow. We'll start to dab in some little greens here as well. Like this, vary the greens, model on your brush, sometimes a little more yellow, sometimes a little less here. And this, what you're building here is movement. And then what you want this to happen, so we tap very heavy into this area where I want the viewer to be drawn into here like this and go up towards his head. And so as we come out through here, you just take your finger and you just let that movement just kind of fade away out to here. You want it to get very blurry, what we call the lost edge, fading out with the lost, the lost edge of it right out here like this, okay? So we'll push that in and push that. Let's grab a little burnt sienna and redefine some of our stickery type move or stems. Just show up a little bit more there like that, okay? Because he's got to be gripping some of those. And since you don't want to paint feet, you got to make sure that you have a little bit of those uh, flowers and blossoms and leaves sitting over him as well. Let's take a little dark shadow, green, and add just a little bit of the darker shadow of just pine green, a little bit of black here. Some of that real dark. And see that coloring is, as I'm putting some of this in here now, just very suggestive of this. As I'm putting this in, this is starting to really pull an area where the viewer's eye is going to be attracted right up here. A little bit of shadow right out here. Not as much the light out to here. We can have some little stick, re stick removed. Now you can use a small liner brush, but I like the fracturing that comes from using, see I, I'll tap some of the color in the brush and I'll use the corner. Just a very light, just very light pressure dragging with just the corner of the uh, flat brush like this and just kind of move that around like that and just kind of wiggle that and move that and that gives my that gives the movement that I want this to have and it doesn't make it precise like a little round brush would make it 
the stem's too precise. You want to have some lost and found edges here, like that, moving through like that. So you don't want it precise. Okay, you want to fracture this up and some of this just kind of moving like this. It's just got all kinds of little stems and stickers and stuff going on here like that. That's a little too much right there. Okay, so now we'll pick up even more white. We'll come right into here. Maybe add just a touch of yellow, model that in with this white and grays here. So when I start to make little, and I don't want to make perfect little blossoms here. I'm going to make more like a, more like little, almost tiny daisy type petals here. So I'm just going to push in and out. Sometimes I'll push in and out just with my finger like this and that will uh, just give you the movement while softening that just like we do with the feathers here now I can come in and put on a little thicker paint here use more of the chisel of the brush and create like little little daisy type flowers here use the thick paint just like this just little flower seeds leaning right up against these. Just think of lots of little blossoms on them there. Okay. There we go. And then, uh, you know, you'll suggest, and it's just, I'm using just almost pure white here. Here, we'll pull some out this way. Let's put a little, and you can work the colors, work the centers back into some of those. Work some yellows and stuff back into those. A little too, too much burnt sienna there. Just model that, and I, I love to use the corner of this brush. That's how I, because I don't like things to be perfect. I like them to be suggestive. And so, you know, that's why I don't use a perfect little round or something like that. I want to just suggest the, the shape of something there. I don't want to be perfect with the shape. Let's come back in and add some little suggestive petals here. And let these just start to fade away out here like this. Little suggestive petals going up the sides here. Maybe like little blossom type things of it going up here like that. A little green. Right up there like that. Just and a little um, brighter little yellow green. A little more Hansa, brighter little yellow green. You could use a little bright little blue green as well. If you wanted to, just add a little tiny bit of thalo blue. Doesn't take much thalo blue there. And I want to get real, because everything here is real small, so I want to just put some small, little, very light yellow green, just corners of the brush, little touches like this. This will make your the feeling of it become very light and airy right here, like that. Okay. And so just use the corner. Now, so you want it heavy in here, and then you want it to fade away out to here. So just little suggestions. Sometimes just hit it with your finger so that all of that fades away. Out here, you can get more towards your grays and a little darker colors as you get out here so you're not quite as light with your, with your little flowers. And more suggestive of the shapes. Just kind of let it dance around a bit here. Just that like that. And this stops just a little quick here, so I need to have maybe just a half of one showing up right here. Okay, and pull down just a bit. Pull down just a bit. Takes the viewer out, see, so let that kind of fade out there like that. And then we'll drop in a little bit of our yellows, burnt siennas. There, like that. And we'll let 
this this kind of fade coming out this way as well. Just little tiny flower bosses. Little movement. And that's just a bit much, so. There, like that. And so that looks pretty good. Now, sometimes I come up and put up here into the uh, very top of him, I come up here and put a little cloud type looking thing. Sometimes I'll just say, I'll, I'll come up here like this and let's uh, maybe make a little bit lighter ones right up in here. Uh, little flowers, make them a little smaller so they sit back behind him. But you know, this is where you control your composition here. It's like how much you want to sink him inside. If I put something like this, he sinks inside these flowers a little bit more. So, uh, you know, you determine that, how much you know, he's going to sit in there. I want to bring just a bit of his tail up here, though. So that sits right up on the front there. Maybe a, a little suggestion of the light color of the edge of the tail here. Just That's a little too much there. Just use your finger just to soften that out there like that. So there you have a... Uh, and that's pretty good. And I'll just leave him like that. We'll put him in a little frame and he'll just be a light little gnat catcher like that with some small flowers. Okay. Hope you enjoyed it. It's a fast, fun little painting. Uh, look for more of our birds. If you like the birds, like the flowers, I got all kinds of roses and stuff. I go in more depth and in, into the actual techniques and the different feathering techniques I use in our book, um, The Art of Painting, which is a garden of birds. And I, I show the exact feathering techniques that I use. And it also comes with some DVDs. But then I have uh, a lot of bird painting videos that you can watch if you like to uh, to do that. So I hope to see you on other lessons here at the Jansen Art Studio. Until then, you have a great painting day. Give it a try. Use thick paint and get light and airy and casual. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.